for Food Matters. We now have a story from the Golden Valley in regards to their first range of products at their latest launch. Let's have a look. So, so what's distinctive about the product? Look, I'm not sure there's anything distinctive. I mean, both products are going to be uh, uh, very interesting, I think, and probably people are going to say they're as good as anything I've ever tasted before. But I think probably what is distinguishable is the fact that um, this has been created by a group of people who have said, I think I'll make a meal for you tonight. I suppose it falls on my shoulders to say something about um, the journey over these past couple of years. There's no doubt it's been an interesting one. A number of us who were here right at the beginning were sort of saying, we wonder whether anything much can be achieved. But I think today something significant has been achieved. The fact that we've got two factories here who have been helping us make the product for today's launch, both of which are severely underutilised. Fantastic capacity in both these places, but quite often not even working a full working week because the demand for their product isn't there. We're saying our virtual factory is every small factory in Australia that is willing to make produce and will do it um, in some ways w working with us. It's important to obviously see what you can do with your food in your own country and we're not parochial. We'll give away our recipe to anyone who wants it. We'll give away um, our, uh, our clever techniques for the pasta to anybody who wants it if they can do it in their community and that doesn't mean even just Australia. If it's somewhere else that can use it, we'd be happy to see it. But we think we've stumbled on something very important. This is the source and it's a different source and I love the way Liz talks about it as being yeah, based on local tomatoes and you know one of our growers has got tomatoes in our pot, we're sure of that, um, but also she's used spices that come from around the world and she's saying uh, this is what our, our country is, our country is not um, you know, a, a whole English born, it's spread across a whole lot of cultures and we should be thinking a bit about Australia that way. We had a couple of trials, uh, so we ran a couple of trials here and, um, and at one of the um, co-op meetings um, we gave them all some pasta and some pasta sauce for lunch and, uh, and the, the sauce got the tick of approval which was great. She and Chris have been working on the pasta so that the pasta and the sauce are compatible. Now that again is not what people are, uh, usually think about when they buy their, uh, their meal. So this is provided for you. In our thoughts it's actually sort of something where people who care about food are giving something to their customers and, and that's what makes it distinctive. It's also got a Peter Russell Clark um, cookbook in it and, uh, and one of Peter's great pieces of, of artwork that I'm sure people would be proud to have in their, in their kitchen. Anyway, without any further ado, I would like to introduce Peter who will do the official launch of the product. Thank you, Peter. God save our pasta sauce. Long live our noble sauce. God save our sauce. Spread it victorious on pasta just glorious. Long to feed all of us. God save I was meant for a string, but it's inappropriate for me to do that. I think I'm a chair of words. I'm happy to want to see it. I'm delighted to be Well, to be perfectly honest, I think probably the real summary is Food Matters. Uh, I know that's the name of your organisation and the show, but it also seems to me to be what we are trying to design is something which actually says at the centre of every community, 
is good food. Um, good food for hospitality, good food because it makes it for nutrition, good food because it enables you to have a, a, uh, uh, a society which knows where its food came from and where it's going. Um, so therefore, I think, to me, the only thing that Co-op wants to say is, go food matters. You came out of the blue At the launch, the Golden Valley Food Co-op awarded prizes to 10 schools in the GV which had created programs to promote awareness of food security issues among our young people. Food security is a concept which is new to many students, even in Victoria's Food Bowl, and was interpreted in some surprising ways. Through doing your project, have you tried any new vegetables that you haven't tried before? And it we made some apple and radish cupcakes and they were really nice. We also added some cinnamon. Yeah, I have tried Brussels sprouts. They're like, alright. The lucky schools today who are receiving the grants um, to assist them on their path to food security um, are really creating history in this region. Um, so congratulations to everyone and it's going to be really great to watch the outcomes of, in the future in this community. As part of our pre cal course, we are helping to design and construct a sustainable kitchen garden and promote a secondary college. We are already discovering some fairly disturbing information and starting to think about the implications of our limited food knowledge. I'm Tim Hall, I'm the principal of Mansfield, and I've brought Renee and Denver along with me. Uh, this for us, this is seed funding for a new unit for us to tackle at year 9 and year 10 level. We're going to um, use the money to build a new uh, garden outside our new hospitality centre and we're going to be learning all about you know, fresh produce and you know, putting paddock on the plate. <laughs> Hello, I'm Annika and this is Alex and we're going to talk about um, our journey from Kidstown. But like Brenda was saying, yeah, our school is looking to use the money to teach kids about soil health and different types of soils you can get and use for different types of products. Great. We've all talked about food. Well, food's probably the most important thing in the world. All we're doing now is importing everything. It's totally unsustainable. It's wonderful for these young children and all the schools getting involved. Because if we don't change what's happening, it's going to be a pretty grim future. So we hope this money that we're giving to these schools helps the young ones to learn about how important produce in Australia is and producing things, for manufacturing. Good morning. We are students from St Mary's School, Rushworth. Our food security project is called Veggie Patch Dinner Plate. At St Mary's we grow vegetables and care for our chooks and in doing so we can gain a clear vision of how we can take the veggie patch to the dinner plate. So what, what's your garden at home growing? Um, well mine's growing lettuce and strawberries at the moment. And you eat both those? You eat lettuce? Yeah. Alright. So Kate, tell me what it's, what's it like to be getting the award today given all that you've been through with the GB Co-op from the beginning, really? Well, it's, it's a wonderful um, opportunity for our schools and, and for the schools in the region, really. Um, and I guess it's, as it's come out today, it starts at the grassroots and perhaps it's the young ones now that can take it further. The whole school had a um, scarecrow competition um, to protect, we thought, food security, <laughs> to secure our food. And, and it's quite interesting to us to talk about that today, about the history of the scarecrow. And we've, it's more than a gun, it's about the teaching and learning of projects. I think I've got three outstanding young Australians here. The garden is more than a garden. It has helped us study and learn together with each other. Scarecrows keep our friends safe from our friends. Thank you. <laughs> The winning project has all the facts and different types of scarecrows in history and the most popular scarecrow. I can tell you a joke about scarecrows you can use. You say, why did the scarecrow get an award? Because it was outstanding in the field. <laughs> <laughs> we would like to thank the GV Food Cooperative for their generous donation. We will be purchasing a greenhouse, watering system and many vegetables 
to Atau already established God. My name is Ben Russell and this is Bailey West and Aidan Anson. We are school captains from Mondeo Primary School. Um, just a question on that. Uh, MasterChef. So you, you've run that in your own school this year, did you? Yeah. Because yeah. how many is in your school there? Uh, 27. 26. 27? So oh. most of the school would have been involved in this. It was a, a school activity. Oh, not the whole um, school, not really. Four people. Four people? Yeah. <laughs> we are very road from Brody Road School and would like to say thank you for the money. Good soil is the source of good food. Good food is the source of good healthy people. When I went to America last year, they had these chocolate pancakes. They were sort of nice, sort of disgusting. <laughs> what you take off of here today is going to be big. It's really going to be important. It's going to have an opportunity to change the world around you. So we want to say from the court, really, thank you so much for what you've done so far. We really want to see where you take this to and how we can support getting the word about, out about what you've achieved. So thank you for coming today. In my former career as a primary school teacher, I taught at some of those schools. Changing careers happens more often in today's workforce, but rarely as dramatically as in the case of Senator Anne Urquhart, a guest speaker at the launch. Food Matters caught up with her recently to hear her story. Those opposite think that the only way to increase productivity in business is to drive down wages and conditions of working Australians. To that I say, think harder and think smarter. I never had ambitions to be a, pol a politician, um, but I just happened to, I guess, be on a, pro in, a you know, in a pathway and a process to, that, that sort of took me along that road. Well, I started um, just two minutes down the road from where I lived at a little place called Gawler in Alveston was uh, what was the Edge or Bird's Eye factory at the time. My kids had just turned a bit over four. And I thought, yep, it's time when I probably went and, you know, earned a little bit of money and you can do a few extra things and mm -hmm. what have you. So I went down, put my name down and uh, actually got called in. And so then that started, you know, a probably, I guess, a 32-year sort of relationship with the food industry, if you like. I became a delegate with the union uh, after I'd been there what, for about two and a half years. Well, I think there are a number of things that led me to that. One was that there was a significant amount of female um, workers there and all of us, all the women, uh, apart from a few, were what we called uh, weekly hire, which effectively at the end of the potato season, we would all get sacked and then we would be rehired the next year, if we were lucky. And I remember I ended up hurting my elbow um, all the boxes got jammed at the end of the, of the line one day and I went down to free them up um, and I ended up hurting my elbow and at the time we had a male shop steward and he was permanent and I remember he said to me look you know maybe you should just you know go to the doctor and you know take a few painkillers and put up with it because you're only casual so you you know you don't want to particularly raise this because you mightn't get called back in and that was a bit horrific to me um, and there was another um, woman that worked there also who had become a delegate um, not long after that. And she actually approached me because um, I'd started to get a bit noisy and stood up for people and stood up for myself um, then. And I actually made a workers' comp claim when, after I'd hurt my arm because I thought, you know, this isn't right. Um, people that get injured shouldn't have to just be quiet because they don't have a permanent job. There was a, a proposition put forward that we should have what was called a seniority list, which meant that you, if you weren't permanent, but you were weekly hire or casual, you would go onto a list that would put you in order of your seniority in terms of how many years you'd been there. That was one of the most significant things that I remember that we actually achieved for the workers, and particularly the women. 
um, because what that gave to them was some security. They could go and raise an issue with their supervisor and not fear that they would be black marked the next year because they knew that the, the, their order of seniority was going to be there. An opportunity came up with a provision, uh, a position within the union for a full-time organiser and I'd sort of thought about it and I thought, oh, I don't know, you know, because once I went out, out of that gate, um, there was no turning back. But it was quite different to being a delegate. It was, it was, you know, each workplace has it, had its own sort of idiosyncrasies. But I remember one place, um, the guys were quite funny about it because I think there were two reasons. One is I was a woman, but also I wasn't a tradesperson. They'd ring me up on the Monday and say, we had a heap of contractors in on Sunday, a sad day. And I'd say to them, well, what did you do about it? And they said, well, we're ringing you now. And I said, well, it's too late now. You know, it's been and gone, it's happened. So next time it happens, go along, talk to the um, supervisor and tell them that we've got an agreement about how this should happen. And if they don't follow that, then go and sit in the lunchroom until they do. And that was days when you could actually do that. So the next Monday, get a phone call again saying, more contractors there, you know. Well, what'd you do about it? Well, we're ringing you. So I went down and had a mass meeting with the guys and effectively I stood up on some pallets so that I was much taller and much bigger than them and uh, suggested to them that they should uh, really stand up for their self, that they should grow some um, proverbials. And that was sort of a turning point, I think, for them but also for me. They didn't need me to do their job because they had the skills to do their job but I, they needed me for their IR stuff. And if we worked together, then we could achieve something. Well, I, I joined the ALP early, um, just, just around the time of the amalgamation. You know, talking in front of an ALP audience at conference instead of just talking to your own peers and, and the workers that you felt really comfortable with was quite different. I had question marks about, can I do this? You know, when I was approached by the State Secretary at the time, and he said, we'd, you know, we'd like you to be the state president. Um, and obviously it's a vote of, you know, the people who have the right to vote. And I thought, oh, I don't know whether I can do that, you know. Nobody um, treated me any differently than the guys before I was the first female one to do that. And then in 2004, I had an opportunity to become the state secretary. And again, I thought, oh, I don't know if I can do that. And again, that self-doubt, and I thought, why am I like that, you know? Do you and think that's about gender? I think that's a little bit to do with it. Um, but I think it was also a little bit about um, my background of being a foodie and that sort of thought process that was always put into us by people with trades background, that we didn't have that qualification. We were involved in developing the... Um, national training policy for Simplot um, that actually recognised the qualification in accordance with the award um, levels. You know, that feeling of not being valuable and not being recognised was really embedded into making sure that we fought really hard to get that for those workers. And I remember we there, there were different factories that, that some grabbed hold of it and said, yep, we'll run with it. There were others who did a Mickey Mouse sort of part of it and really didn't want it to relate to a, a wage classification because they thought they would have to pay their workers more, um, which, you know, to me was, I, I can understand why businesses don't want to pay more, but I don't understand that if someone's skills are worth something, that they shouldn't be recognised in that process either, so. We now have a story from Kyabram. I recently interviewed Alison Polzoni from Five Star Aussie Fruits in Kyabram about co-op products and about the impact it has had on her business. Let's have a look. Hi, my name's Alison Polzoni and I'm the owner of Five Star Aussie Fruits here in Kyabram. The shop came about as an outlet for ways of getting rid of our own orchard produce. We were 
selling most of it to the Melbourne market and then had excess product that we would bring through the shop. Our other products have come through the local community wanting to, us to stock products that weren't available anywhere else in Kyabrum. The aim of starting Five Star was to employ locals, keep jobs locally, to keep as much Australian owned product that we could. So the co-op came and approached us about selling the pasta sauce and pasta and it just seemed a natural progression to keep it local, keep local jobs here. So we said yes, we were more than happy to do our bit for the community. With the first pasta and sauce product that the co-op made, it was really great. The community got behind it. Um, we were having plenty of people come in that didn't even eat pasta, but wanted to support the project and were buying it to give away, to take to Melbourne, to do all sorts of things just to get behind the local community and the product. One Saturday morning I was talking to Les about the co-op and offered him some pears from the family orchard um, that were going to be kept fed to the cows within the next couple of weeks and if they could do anything about it then we were more than happy to give it to them. He went away and called my husband the next day and said we'll take the pears, we've got some great ideas, so pear cider was born. We have a temporary liquor licence for six weeks to see how it goes. It's been a great success so far. The local co-op hopefully will be extremely important in coming years for selling the community as well as um, local fruit and veg. Uh, we have lost our dairy industry over the last 10 years so we really need another industry to take off for it to be a really um, profitable place to live. Well, that's all we have for you today. Hope you enjoyed the stories. See you next time.